Excellencies, Honorable Heads of United Nations Agencies, colleagues from the Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, friends. It is our privilege today to welcome you all here at the Federation at this very special occasion. The first visit of Mr. Tadatero Kanoi to Geneva in his new capacity of the President of the International Federation of Red Cross, Red Crescent Societies. I have the pleasure of passing the floor to the President of the International Federation of the Red Cross, Red Crescent Society, Mr. Tadatero Kanoi. Sir, you have the floor. Well, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this, this distinguished guests, I'm very much honored to welcome you to the Secretariat on my first visit to Geneva since my election as International Federation's President at our General Assembly in Nairobi in November 2009. I have dedicated my entire professional life to the Red Cross Red Crescent. I joined my own national society, the Japanese Red Cross in 1964, but you could say that my path was already mapped out for me on the day I was born, the 8th of May. Uh, this was the birth date of our founder, Henri Dunant, and has long been celebrated as World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day. My first involvement with Red Cross came when in a break from my international re relations studies at the London School of Economics in the early 60s. I came to Geneva where I knew very well the Japanese ambassador then, uh, by the name of Aoki. I had nowhere to stay, uh, being a poor student at the time, so I just knocked uh, on the door of uh, the residence uh, of the Japanese ambassador in Janto and asked uh, for his favor. The ambassador said uh, he could find me somewhere to stay, uh, but in return he needed uh, my favor. This was days before the Red Cross uh, ceremony procession in Geneva, and he had no one to uh, well, participate in that, carrying Japanese flag and wearing Japanese uh, costume. So I borrowed his kimono, uh, found the flag, and joined in, in a cold, wet procession from the Geneva University to uh, Orvive. Well, he kept on uh, complaining that uh, I spoiled his uh, kimono uh, till he died. Uh, <laughs> so after finishing my study in uh, London and back in Japan, I first volunteered for the Japanese Red Cross and uh, within a month was offered a full-time job. I knew little uh, well, at the time about this movement. Uh, perhaps I was naive, if idealistic at the time. The Red Cross Red Crescent is a global family and when based on seven fundamental principles as quoted by our Secretary General Pekele, uh, and quoted also by uh, Ambassador. Uh, our 186 National Red Cross and Red Crescent societies are diverse in their histories, environments, activities, and the capacities, but all work side by side with the national government in a unique auxiliary role. A concept governments and the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement have emphasized strongly during the last international conference of Red Cross and Red Crescent in 2007. Our dedicated volunteers are our most precious resource, saving lives and building resilience in the communities large and small. Our experts in disaster response and recovery, development and humanitarian diplomacy have much to offer at uh, the decision-making bodies, uh, decision-making tables. We can bring the voices of our beneficiaries to your ears. Much can be learned from them, I'm sure. Our diversity is one of our strengths, 
our unity as a federation is another. On the international stage, we can speak with one voice and mobilize our capacities, capacities to partner with government agencies and other humanitarian organizations when a natural or technological disaster strikes. But I'm not talking to you as president of an organization that simply acts when the circumstances make it necessary. The national societies are ulterior to the public authorities in the humanitarian field in each country. And they are therefore part of, of, part of their development agenda. The International Federation of Humanitarian Diplomacy approach is to ensure that the needs and aspirations to the world's vulnerable people are taken into account at the highest levels. And the Red Cross, Red Crescent, with its local knowledge and global reach, can argue convincingly for the protection and expansion of the humanitarian space needed in crisis situations. I don't want to miss uh, this first opportunity with you to ask your support in the implementation of the guidelines for the domestic facilitation and the regulation of international disaster relief and initial recovery assistance, better known as international disaster response law. In my role as president, I'm determined to encourage and develop this spirit of togetherness, both within our movement and in the International Federation's work with its partners. Strong relationships such as these are needed right now in Haiti following the 12th January earthquake. I visited the port au prince shortly after the quake with our Secretary General Bekele and was shocked by the devastation and the suffering. It is perhaps the most serious humanitarian catastrophe I have seen in more than 30 relief missions with the Red Cross, Red Crescent, in the last 40 years. But there is hope, and there is a spirit of togetherness in the streets and camps, shelters and health clinics between Red Cross, Red Crescent personnel, and those of the UN family and other organizations working so hand to hand, uh, so hand in hand to help people in need. Haiti is indeed a challenge for humanity, but humanity is equal to the task. Nobody is unmoved. The generosity of the general public and the governments alike has been exceptional, and there is real determination at the highest level to help Haiti recover from the terrible event and move on to a safer, more resilient and empowered future. We thank you for your confidence and partnership and commit to supporting the Haiti Red Cross to help to meet the needs of the affected people. Sir Excellencies, distinguished guests, further challenges will come and we must be ready to face them. The International Federation has a new roadmap for the coming decade, that is Strategy 2020. And this will help the network to do more and do it better in the years to come. Your continued support will be invaluable throughout this process. I thank you all for everything you have already done to support the Red Cross Red Crescent in all our efforts to alleviate vulnerability wherever it is found. I look forward to working with you all in the future and to building our own spirit of togetherness. Thank you very much indeed for your attention and thank you for your well, accepting our invitation. Thank you.